Hi everyone, this is Scott and I'm here with another SoapUI video. This is video number 6 and today we're going to be going through data driving our tests. So you can follow along if you want by downloading the SOAP project and the WSDL file. There's a link in the description below that will take you to where you can do that. Or you can create your own project. So if we just uh, file, import the project that you've downloaded. And it's going to ask you for the WSDL. So just select WSDL. There's a folder where, the WSD, where you've saved your WSDL. Open and OK. This is much like the other videos, we're going to run the mock so that we have something to run our tests against. In this project, under the Get Hero Name Test Suite, we have two test cases. So, for the first one, with our hero service, we send in a hero name and we get back the real name, Heartlink, as well as their first name, last name, and my neighbor's name. So if you're testing this the service that was returning these real names, you would have a bunch of different hero names to send into the service and then you'd be making sure that you got the right real name back. So supernam is one, here we're expecting Clark Kent. In test number two we've got Spider-Man, if we run Spider-Man we get back Peter Parker and Batman's another one, we get Bruce Wayne back. Now these tests also have a assertion, it's a script assertion. Uh, this is basically saying, hey, for this test we expect Bruce Wayne to come back. And then it's going to pull in the response, check the actual name and go, yes, it does match. Right. And as you can see, we've got nine test cases here. Or test steps, if you like. Each one is its own test. We can see that they're all passed and, and that, for the most part, is great. The problem with this approach is that if the request schema changed or the response schema changed, say uh, they decided they wanted to make a change to the element that was coming back, which we can probably demonstrate if we jump into our mock response. If we decide to change get hero real name result to get hero full real name result for whatever reason, this is just an example. If we run this, you can see we're now getting full real name result back and our test is failing. Our test is failing because it's still looking for the get hero real name. Uh, we can fix it just by adding in full name in here. Script session now passes, but we would have to do that for every single test here. By data driving our tests, which is this example here, we actually only have one one request. Therefore, if we need to make any changes, we just deal with that one, one change. So I'll just take you through the steps. I'm not going to type the code as we talk. I've already put it in there, and we'll just go through it line by line. In much the same way, it's just a normal test suite. Um, when it gets to the test case level, there's some changes in there. First of all, uh, we have a setup script. And in the setup script, we have some groovy code. Now, this groovy code is all related to this file called hero list CSV. So, I'll just show you that file. We're going to open it up in Notepad. We can open up in Microsoft Excel or even in just a Notepad. So, this is our data source, if you like. We have the first line is our titles. So, we have the hero name, hero alias first name, last name, and the neighbor's name. And line two is where we actually start having the data. So the first test we want to run is using Superman. We want to see Clark Kent, Clark Kent, and Barry come back in the response. The next test case we want, or the next test iteration we want, is Spider-Man, and obviously we've got Spider-Man's real details coming back. Then Batman, Captain America, Daredevil, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, Flash, and Wonder Woman which matches up to what we have up here. So in this groovy script, we're basically saying, hey, where's our project? So this is where is your SOAP UI project saved? And in relation to that, grab us this data source file. Uh, we are then uh, 
kind of read in the first line of that data source file. Now remember that the first line is, is generally the uh, title list. So we're just going to make sure we put that title list to the projects and then we're going to split it up. Next we're going to read in the next line of data. So this is the actual data which would be line number two. We're going to split it by the comma because it's a CSV and we're going to sort out how, how many items should be in there. So it's going to read in the title count size, so it's going to go there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then for each one it's going to set a property. See so here it's going to set a property, it's going to call it by its title field and then it's going to assign that property to it. If I run this, you'll see what I mean. I'll just run that, if I open up properties now, this is at the test case level properties. And see this is our title list which is a list of all our titles and we use that for the reading on the next line of data and then we have hero name alias first name last name and the neighbor's name and they're all from that data file in fact if we go through and we delete these even if we just delete a few of them go back to our setup script hit the run button go back to our properties they're all back again so that's going to set up that first iteration of the tests. So now if we open up our test request, we want to change our request so that it's not sending in Spider-Man, but it's sending in whatever is in the test case property read in from the data source, which is hero name. So what we're going to do is change this to dollar sign, open curly bracket, hash sign, test case with capital T capital C hash and then the name so this is hero name close curly bracket so what this is going to do is it's not going to pass this through as a string it's actually going to convert this to whatever is in the properties this is the test case properties and it's hero name so whatever this value is it'll pump it into the test so in the first iteration it'll be superman course in the second iteration of data it'll be whatever the next hero name is. So if we run this now, note that it was Spider-Man, if we run it now we can see that we're getting Clark Kent back. If we click on the raw request we can actually see what was sent in the request and we can see down here it's got Superman which is the first hero name. Obviously our assertion has failed because it's still thinking it should be Spider-Man and we need to update this assertion so that it's not actually a hard-coded value in here but it's getting that from the data source so to do that we will change this to context.expand open parentheses apostrophe dollar sign open curly bracket hash sign test case with capital T capital C hash and then we need to enter in what we called the, the result so remember we're wanting this value here which is hero alias so going back to our project we can't see it but hero alias is in alias is there so now we close curly bracket apostrophe and close parenthesis so what that should do now is it should get the expected name come back from the properties and of course the properties is being updated from the data source. The, we've already changed this to the full name for that schema. So if we run this, we should get a pass back. Excellent. So now that we've got that working, we need to read in the next line of data for the next iteration of tests and this is where a groovy script comes into it so if you're not sure how to add a groovy script you can just right click on test steps add step and there's a groovy script there and you can rename it to anything you want within reason oh i'm just going to remove that now so we've got in this read next line of data I'll just expand this out so we can go through it so first of all we're going to grab the title list which we put to the properties in our setup script and we're going to split that out 
and we're also going to get the size again um, and we're going to remove any properties that are already in there because we don't any, want any residual data from the first line getting into the second line so we want to clear all those properties out then we're going to read in the next line we don't have to create a new uh, file reader as we're just going to use the existing one and then once again if it doesn't equal null so if there's data there we're going to read that data in we're going to add the title field back to the properties and that's because we deleted it out but we do want to keep that one we're then going to split out the line of data into each segment and then for each title count we're going to apply that piece of data to the properties so here it's going to be the title field and then the property data then when that's completed we're going to go and tell it to go run step zero so that's where our loop is when it gets to this line it's going to go zero and this is reads in starting at zero that's zero that's one if we had four or five test steps it'd be zero one two three four five of course if this does equal null so if it's got to the last line of data it's reading the next one and there's nothing there it's then going to skip all that and it's actually just going to end the test so if we run this we should see that although it's run very quickly because we're just hitting a mock you can see that it's actually run the get hero real name the read in next line get hero real name read in next line and it's done that for all the data that's in here we can actually see what it's sending so here's the first one superman and we've got back clark kent and grab just another one here we're sending incredible hulk we've got robert bruce banner coming back and of course the last one is wonder woman diana prince coming back now each time it's run this test it's not looking for a hard code value it's looking for whatever is from the data source for this one and whatever's in the data source for this one great i guess the last thing to point out in this is also going back to the test case level we have a teardown script and we just want to close that file reader otherwise that file is going to be locked by soap ui and you won't be able to do anything with it so the great thing about this test is that we're covering all these scenarios so there's nine scenarios in there but we actually only have one request and one response so if they decided that they wanted to change this back to to remove the full from the response schema which we'll do here i'm going to take full name out so if they change their service we run our test it's failed but all we need to do is go into our assertion once we confirm that that's the change that we want to see change our assertion to full real name result and rerun our test so we don't need to go into every single test step and change every single test it's all done in one so for this example we used a csv file we could also use microsoft excel file it's different groovy to read it in but much the same also if you have the pro version you'll have a test step that can handle the data driving and a loop step that will handle the looping back around but as for groovy scripts it's relatively straightforward relatively simple and it's quite reusable across different projects so hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can really take your tests to a next level you can certainly run a lot of scenarios just through through this and then any changes you can make once and it applies to all the tests and especially if you're in a, a agile team where you're constantly having changes as you go this is a great way to be able to run all those tests without having a huge maintenance so i hope you liked the video if you did hit the like button subscribe and we'll see you in the next video